Hi everybody! So I thought this would be kind of fun. I love watching favourites videos. So I was like, why don't I do like my medical student version? I don't think I'd be a medical student without this. It is my stethoscope. I spent so long deciding on what colour stethoscope I was going to get. This is a Lippmann Classic 2. I think it's called Cecil Blue or maybe it's called Seal Blue. A lot of people ask me, do I need a stethoscope when I start medical school? The thing is, these are not going to break and I think I paid about £5 for a case and that way it just won't get scratched or anything. The thing is with stethoscopes is it's just practice. I practice on myself to see if I can hit like the heart valves um, to make sure I've got like them all in the right place. I think this was just over £70 which is quite a lot but if you split it up over your five or six year degree it's not that bad. Ask for it for Christmas or as a present for passing your exams. I'd say I don't think I needed it in first year. I think I actually got it at the end of first year. I just love it and it just makes you feel so good but I'd be so lost without my seal blue or Cecil blue whatever it's called stethoscope there's something lovely about having a book now for the oldies amongst us this was known as the cheese and onion book I guess because it's yellow and green for me it's always just been the Oxford handbook of clinical medicine if you see the contents page so you've got like cardiovascular medicine endocrinology hematology neurology oncology it's got like a page or two of all the most common conditions in that specialty and I love how they split it up causes symptoms and signs tests how to manage it. It's just perfect for when you're so done with staring at a laptop or when you're traveling to placement you can whip this out and they have loads of different Oxford handbooks so they have one of psychiatry which I have, they have one of more sort of specialties so like obs and gynae, peds. You can also get an app which I do have but for me the benefit of this is to not be staring at a screen to do some work or revision so I really recommend getting the book. And I feel like you'll use this forever and ever. My next thing is a good pair of noise cancelling headphones. Those of you that live in London or any busy city, it's just so nice to be able to cancel out the sound of the underground. Oh, that's the song, isn't it? Sound of the underground. Good old girls aloud. Yeah, you can listen to a podcast because with the earphones on the tube, I can't listen to a podcast because the tube is just too loud, especially the Jubilee line. So a good pair of noise cancelling headphones. I love listening to a podcast on the way to placement. A lot of your placements will be quite a trek to get to. So you really want to try and make that time valuable time, whether it's just listening to a podcast that you enjoy to relax or whether it's listening to a more medicine one. The main ones I listen to are Sharp Scratch, BMJ one I listen to, which is more like clinical medicine. There's so many, but yeah, let me know if you would like to hear more about the podcast that I love. The next thing is so random, but I promise it's actually been game changing. This beautiful thing is a laptop stand. This allows you to actually sit up and not look down. I remember I, in the first lockdown, and I honestly had neck strain from just like staring at my computer like this. This cost me £30 and it's, I think it's steel I want to say. It's very sturdy. If you even wanted to, you could take this in your bag. You could take it to the library. That's just been game changing for me. Can't recommend it enough. The next thing, it just wouldn't be a medical student favourites without, is exhibit A, coffee. I am not a massive, massive coffee drinker, but I do love one or two coffees a day. Today it's been a two coffee kind of day because this morning I literally woke up and I was like, no, no. I don't want to do Monday, I don't want to do today. If you're buying coffee out, it can really, really add up. With a portable cup, you do get 50p off at prep, but it still adds up. And I used to drink filter coffee sometimes, but it's just not the same. If I had filter coffee, I'd always want to go out and buy a coffee. I recently bought a subscription to Nespresso. I paid £20 a month, um, which included the machine free of charge, and £20 a month to spend on like their capsules, which basically works out 1.5 coffees a day. So that that actually works perfect for me and 20 pounds a month it's not cheap cheap but when you add up coffees it's so expensive now some of you might go yeah but tash why didn't you just get the 20 pound a month prep subscription now this is true prep do five coffees or actually five drinks so you can get smoothies as well a day for 20 pounds a month which don't get me wrong is really good but because of lockdown i just have wanted to be able to make coffee at home when lockdown eases and obviously you're out and about it might be better to actually get the prep subscription but definitely consider a subscription of choice if you're a coffee drinker like myself because for me it's such a treat and i just love it 
Mm, so good. Now this is a bit different, a bit more out there, but this is a wonderful book that I think every medical student, every doctor, every healthcare student, every healthcare professional should read. This is called The Health Gap by Michael Marmer. It's all about health inequalities. As doctors, we are very much the last part of the chain of somebody's health. So many things influence health, education, social status, where you sit on the social hierarchy in terms of money, job. Honestly, I just can't recommend Michael Marmot's books enough. And he's also done two reviews, which you can access online. It really starts to get you thinking about just health as a concept rather than just like diseases and treating disease. Honestly, guys, just read it. Just read it, please. So let's talk about how I organize my life. I absolutely love Google Calendar, but there's something so nice about a hard copy of something. What I use my diary for is every morning I will look at my Google Calendar and I'll see if I've got any events, say a lecture or podcast recording. This is a day by day diary. So say it's the 10th of July, I've got this whole page for one day. I'll write out everything else that I have to do that day. So kind of like a to-do list. So you can see here, it's quite a busy couple of pages, but I literally scribble everything down that I have to do that day, cross it off. That way my brain can just kind of cope with everything I have to do. So yeah, I really, really love having a day-by-day -day diary in conjunction with Google Calendar. Finally, I think my last favourite would have to be past medicine. Honestly, I spent so many days, so many hours writing notes, making it look pretty. It's such a waste of time. I will just open up past medicine, go through some questions, and then anything that I get wrong or I don't understand, I will start scribbling down, not notes of stuff that I'm gonna look over again, but just like, because obviously writing things down really helps me remember things. So I'll write stuff down, make some scribbles, and then, I will make my own Anki question card of that question. So I won't completely copy the question, but make something of that topic to kind of trigger my memory. Past medicine, scribbling things down on a rough piece of paper plus Anki has to be my final medical student favorite thing. I bet I'm gonna finish recording this and being like, damn, why didn't I include that? But make sure you follow my Instagram and I'll share anything that definitely is my favorite over there. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you all next time. Bye, everybody.